Today is the 27th February 1998. Our Vipassana meditation retreat starts on this day. <clears throat> First of all, you took off the A precept. Because of when one wants to meditate, either Samatha meditation or Vipassana meditation. <clears throat> he is required to observe at least five precepts so that his morality, his morality is purified. It's uh, very much important to have a purification of a morality as base for either Samatha meditation or Vipassana meditation. Because the purification of a morality is very much conducive to the concentration as well as the insight. That's why Meditator has to observe <clears throat> at least five precepts, if it's a possible or a precept. If you observe five precepts, then you'll have to spend your time on dinner and preparation of dinner and washing dishes and so on. In this way, your time is much spent for your dinner, so it's better to observe a precept <clears throat> so that you have ample time to spend on meditation. <clears throat> there are three types of trainings in Buddhism. One is a training and sila morality, which is known as a sila sikha. The second is a training and concentration, which is known as a samadhi sikha. <clears throat> the third is a training in wisdom, insight or enlightenment, which is known as a Panya Sikha. <clears throat> Out of these three types of a Sikha or training, Sila Sikha, training in morality is the basic requirement for a person who wants to train his mind and concentration as well as insight or wisdom. <clears throat> That's why you have to observe a precept before you start to meditate. <clears throat> By observing these precepts, your morality is purified. Here, <clears throat> sila, precept, means restraint on deed and speech, that's all. When your deed is purified, and when your speech is purified, then your morality is purified. By observing a precept, both deed and speech can be purified. <coughs> As you know, <coughs> In Buddhism, 
ายกรรมะวจีกรรมะมโนกรรมะกายกรรมะ means bodily actions วจีกรรมะ means verbal actions มโนกรรมะ means mental action <coughs> มโน is mind or mental กรรมะ is action or deed No karma means mental actions, mental deeds. Out of these three, by observing precepts, especially a precept, <coughs> your kaya karma and vaji karma, bodily actions. And f a v e l actions are purified because you have to restrain your deed and speech so that you cannot do evil things. You cannot speak evil speech. So by observing the a precepts. Your deed and speech is purified, but precepts or observance observance of precepts does not enable a person to purify his mind. It's the only meditation. <clears throat> That enable a person's mind to purified. That enable a person to purify his mind. So, based on purification of a deed and speech, or purification of a morality, meditator have to develop. Either samatha or vipassana, either concentration meditation or insight meditation. <clears throat> Then, purification of morality or purification of a deed and speech helps the mind or helps the meditator. To be able to purify his mind by means of either samatha meditation or vipassana meditation. When once the deed and speech is purified, one is happy because he feel clear conscience. About this deed and speech. If his deed and speech is not purified, then he feels a guilty conscience. When he feels guilty conscience, he is not happy. His mind is not clear. Then he is not able to concentrate his mind well on. The object of meditation. In this way, his concentration is weak. If he <clears throat> has a purification of um, deed and speech, he feel clear conscience and happy. Is the mind also clear? Then that clear conscience, happiness, and clear mind helps him to attain some degree of a deep concentration and also some clear insight into phenomena. That's why meditator. Meditators have to observe at least five precepts, if it is possible, eight precepts. 
But for bhikkhus, there are 227 rules of a vinaya, monastic code, to observe as a morality, purification of uh, morality. <clears throat> so you have taken up this uh, a precept now as a basic requirement for your meditation. Then you feel clear conscience because your morality is purified by observing the precept. The clear conscience conducive to your concentration as well as insight. So you have to practice, uh, uh, you can practice either samatha meditation or vipassana meditation <clears throat> based on the purification of morality, which is known as sila visuddhi. This is the, the first visuddhi of the seven kinds of visuddhi. Only sila, or morality, is purified. Meditator can concentrate well on the object of meditation and attain the clear insight into mental and physical phenomena. <clears throat> then, here, you are to practice vipassana meditation based on this purification of a mind, no samatha meditation. Then I think here yeah, we should know a little bit the difference between samatha meditation and vipassana meditation. Samatha meditation, as you know, is a concentration meditation. It's a practice to attain deep concentration of a mind only, not to realize any mental or physical phenomena. So by means of a samatha meditation, a meditator cannot realize any mental or physical phenomena in their true nature. <clears throat> Vipassana meditation is a practice to attain the cessation of a suffering, Nibbana, through realization of mental and physical phenomena in their true nature, based on some degree of uh, concentration. This is the difference, the main points of the difference between Samatha meditation and Vipassana meditation. That's why we have to try to practice Vipassana meditation so that we can realize mental and physical phenomena in their true nature and uh, destroy all mental defilements, negative mental states, and attain the cessation of the suffering. Though we are able to attain deep concentration of a mind, we cannot attain the cessation of the suffering if we are not able to realize any mental and physical phenomena. That's why we have to practice a vipassana meditation. But today, I won't deal with 
the theoretical aspects of uh, vipassana meditation i'll deal with the practical aspects of vipassana meditation you are also not beginners i think you have some experience and vipassana meditation maybe it about except for about uh, one or two meditators <clears throat> so i'll deal with just a practical practical aspects of uh, vipassana <clears throat> here vipassana means um, the realization of impermanent suffering or unsatisfactoriness and uh, non self or non non ego of mental physical phenomena these are called three general characteristics of the existence impermanence and nature suffering or unsatisfactoriness dukkha no self for not ego is anatta these are three general characteristics belongs to all mental states and physical process in other word all mental states and physical process has these three characteristics of impermanence suffering and no soul no self nature or impersonal nature absence of a soul or self only a meditator have realized that these three characteristics of a mental and physical phenomena he will be able to remove all mental defilements which are the causes of suffering unless he is able to realize that these three characteristics anicca dukkha and anatta impermanent suffering and impersonal nature of the phenomena he won't be able to destroy any of a mental defilements and then he won't be able to attain the cessation of the suffering he won't be able to put an end to suffering that's why we pass now the realization of impermanent impermanent suffering impersonal nature of mental and physical phenomena is very much important for a person who wants to get rid of a suffering <clears throat> that's why we have to practice a vipassana meditation vipassana is a roughly translated into insight i n s i n g h t insight <clears throat> actually this insight <clears throat> can be attained by means of uh, bare attention to what is happening to our body and mind because uh, if insight 
is mixed with any analytical knowledge, intellectual reasoning, philosophical thinking. That insight is not pure, so it doesn't penetrate into the true nature of body-mind process or mental and physical phenomena as they really are. Then <clears throat> we won't be able to destroy any of mental defilements because our insight is not pure. So we are not able to see any mental states or physical process as it really is. That's why when we develop the insight knowledge by means of vipassana meditation, we should not, we must not think about the technique or the object or the experience. We must not analyze them. We must not think about them. We must not have a, we must not conceptualize it. What we should do is to see it as it really occurs. <clears throat> That's why the Buddha said, Bhutan Bhutato Pasati. The meaning is, um, you should see a thing as it, as it is. That's the right understanding of the thing. So, to right understanding, to attain the right understanding, Samadhiti and Pali, we should try to see any mental states or physical process as it really occurs. That is insight knowledge. <clears throat> Vipassana jnana. Then to see things as they really are is right understanding of the phenomenon. To rightly understand or to realize any mental phenomenon or physical phenomenon as it really is. We have to be mindful of it as it really occurs at the moment of occurrence. This is Vipassana meditation or mindfulness meditation, or insight meditation. So the insight meditation, Vipassana meditation, has many varieties of mental states and physical processes as the objects of meditation. Any mental state is the object of meditation. Any physical process is in the the object of meditation, because uh, any mental states or physical process has these three characteristics, impermanent, suffering, and personal nature. Because every mental state arises and then very instant instantly passes away. It doesn't last even a millionth of a second. So, it has 
the nature of our impermanence. It's not permanent. It doesn't last permanently. It arises and then and very instantly passes away. The Buddha said, Yad Nejantan Dukhan, the meaning is, what is impermanent is a suffering. So, when we see any mental state rising in passing away, then we see it's a suffering too. Then we see it's uh, the the nature of uh, non, no self, non ego, because uh, so called self or ego or soul is regarded as everlasting entity, but none of mental states of physical process is everlasting. Every mental state and physical process arises in their very instant process way. So they are neither a self or nor a soul, neither a person nor a being. That's why they are called no self, non ego, and uh, no person, no being. These are called anatta. In this way, <coughs> by being mindful of any mental states or physical process, we come to realize it's the impermanent suffering and personal nature. Then we don't take it to be a person, a being, a self or a soul. That's why we need to be mindful of it, to be aware of any mental states or physical process that is arising at this moment as it is. This is mindfulness meditation or vipassana meditation, insight meditation, but there are many objects of vipassana because every mental state and physical process are the object of vipassana meditation. So for the beginner, he may get puzzled what to be mindful of, what to be aware of in the beginning of the practice. To avoid that difficulty in the practice, the most venerable Mahasis Yaro, the late venerable Mahasis Yaro, teaches his students to begin with the rise and fall of the abdomen for his meditation. When you breathe in, the abdomen rises. When you breathe out, the abdomen falls. When the abdomen rises, you observe it making mental note as a rising. When the abdomen falls, you observe it, making mental note, falling in this way, rising, falling. But the abdominal movement, abdomen, moves in many ways. Sometimes the abdomen moves outward and then inward. Sometimes it moves upward and downward. Sometimes it moves around. It depends on 
meditators physical composite. Whatever it may be, when you feel the abdomen moves, say, forward or backward, outward or inward, you should observe the movement and notice it as rising. When it moves inward or backward, you observe it precisely, attentively, and note it as falling in this way, rising, falling, rising, falling. The word rising, the words rising and falling are not absolute reality, not ultimate reality. They are concept. But this concept, the words rising and falling, helps the mind to focus on the movement or the object precisely and attentively. So we have to use uh, this concept, labeling, or mental note, such as rising, falling. <clears throat> but we should not, our mind, stay with the words. It should go to the physical movement, actual movement of the abdomen. Observing so, observing or being aware of actual movement of abdomen and notice it rising. Observing actual movement of the abdomen and what? Then notice it as falling. In this way, rising, falling, rising, falling. In the beginning of the pratism, the abdominal movement may not be distinct enough to observe. But <clears throat> Later on, it will become more and more evident and conspicuous to the mind. Then, meditator can concentrate on it very well. But in the beginning, the abdominal movement, of movement may not be satisfactory, so satisfactory that meditator can concentrate well on it. <clears throat> then the meditator, to make it more distinct, he breathes, breathes out vigorously or somewhat quickly so that the abdominal movement becomes more distinct. He must not do it. Breathing must be natural and normal. Later on, the abdominal movement will be more distinct, more prominent to the mind so that meditator can concentrate well on it. So meditator must not try to breathe in or breathe out vigorously or quickly or deeply. Breathing must be normal, natural, as much as possible. Try to observe it as much as possible. Gradually when 
the mind becomes concentrated to a certain extent on the movement, it will be more and more distinct to the mind. <clears throat> During contemplation of a rising fallen movement, you may hear any sound of voice loud enough. Then you note hearing, hearing, hearing. Here, yeah, you, when you observe the consciousness of a hearing, not the sound of the voice, you are to observe the consciousness of a hearing as hearing, 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 hearing. Observing the consciousness by hearing includes the sound, the object. Then you come to realize both consciousness by hearing and the sound of the voice. <clears throat> So, you should note hearing, 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 hearing about four or five times after that you return to the, the abdominal movement. Note as usual, rising and falling. In the beginning, your mind doesn't stay with the movement of the food. However, you try to try hard to concentrate it on the abdominal movement. It doesn't stay with the movement of the foot even a minute. It goes out very often, wonders of things about something else. When the mind wonders or thinks about something, you must not bring the mind back to the primary object, that's the rise and fall and movement. You must not bring the mind back to the primary object, rise and fall and movement. Then what should you do? You should observe the mind which is wandering, which is the thinking which is imagining, making mental know as wondering, 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 thinking, thinking, imagining, imagining, and so on. Until that wandering mind has stopped, that wandering thought has stopped. After it has stopped, you return to the primary object. Notice you as well, rising, falling, rising, falling. <clears throat> Why do you need to observe this wandering thought, thinking mind? Because <clears throat> mindfulness and meditation is to be mindful of or to observe whatever arises in our mind and body as it really occurs. The Buddha said, Vikhi dan vajay dan vikhi dan jay dan di pajana di. In the chapter of uh, mindfulness of a consciousness. Vikhi dan vajay dan vikhi dan jay dan di pajana di means uh, when the mind wanders, you should observe it as it is. That's it, uh, <clears throat> what the Buddha said. When the mind wanders, you observe it as it is. When the mind runs or goes out, you observe it as it is. Why you have to be mindful of the wandering mind, the thinking, imagination? Because wandering thought, thinking mind, imagination 
are also the mental states, mental phenomena, which are known as nama. This mental nama, mental phenomena, has three characteristics, impermanence, suffering, and personal nature. To see or to realize impermanent suffering, impersonal nature of this wandering thought, thinking mind, we have to observe it, we have to be mindful of it as it is. <clears throat> this is a vipassana meditation. But in samatha meditation, whenever the mind goes out, wonders, you sh bring the mind back to the primary object and focus on it. That's uh, samatha meditation. Why should you bring the mind back to the primary object in samatha meditation? Because uh, the purpose of a samatha meditation is to concentrate the mind on a single object of a meditation very deeply. So, meditator has to bring the mind back to the primary object and focus it on it attentively so that he can concentrate well on a single object of meditation. That is a samatha meditation. And with personal meditation, you must you must not do so because with personal meditation doesn't need deep concentration. It needs a realization of a three characteristics of a mental and physical phenomena. But to realize them, meditator needs some degree of a concentration. This is some degree of a concentration which is required for <clears throat> some vipassana meditation can be attained by observing each mental state of physical process arising at this moment or from moment to moment. The in vipassana meditation, meditator has to focus his mind on successive objects, one after another. So if he observes each object attentively enough, his mind is concentrated on the, the, the first object and also the following objects too. <coughs> So, in this way, Vipassana meditator attain some degree of a concentration which enable him to realize that these three characteristics impermanent, suffering, impersonal, natural phenomena. <clears throat> so, yeah, what I want to repeat is when the mind goes out, when the mind wanders, thinks about something else, you must not bring the mind back to the object. You should observe that mind which is wandering or thinking as it really occurs until that thought has disappeared. After the thought has disappeared, you return to the primary object and note as usual, rise and fall. When you note wandering thought, thinking my imagination, you are noting should be more powerful, more attentive, more energetic than the process of a thought, wandering thought. So that your mindfulness or you are noting my becomes a more powerful. You should note it more attentively 
energetically and somewhat quickly, making mental note as wondering, 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 thinking, 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 thinking. In this way, the note of mind becomes more and more powerful, and more attentive, and more energetic enough. When the note of mind becomes more powerful and more energetic, then thinking mind process gradually becomes stops, because it is overwhelmed by the powerful note of mind. Then it stops. After that, the note of mind will return to the primary object, a note as usual, as rising and falling. <coughs> While you are contemplating rising and falling movement of the abdomen, you may feel any pain or stiffening, itching, any unpleasant physical discomfort. Then you should leave the abdomen alone and go to the point of pain or stiffening, itching, numbness. Observe it as it is. Making mental no pain, pain, stiffening, stiffening, itching, itching, num, num. Until that unpleasant sensation has subsided or disappeared. After that unpleasant sensation, pain or stiffening has disappeared. You return to the primary object that's rising and falling and note as usual. But when you observe the pain, pain or stiffening or itching, the more intently you observe it, the more severe you become you feel. At that time, you, you think because of you are noting or because you note the pain attentively, the pain becomes severe. Actually, the pain doesn't become severe, but the mind becomes more and more concentrated. When the mind becomes more concentrated, it becomes more sensitive to the pain then you think the pain becomes severe. But whatever it may be, when you have pain or stiffening itching on any part of the body, you should be patient with it and observe it as much as possible, attentively enough. First of all, you should observe the pain, you should note the pain attentively energetically, but the pain may disappear or subside, then you come to the primary object, no test user. But most of the time, the pain becomes severer, severer and severer, do you think? Then you have to be more patient with the pain and continue to observe it. But eventually, you the pain may become <coughs> severe, and the, the state of a severe condition. Or, if you are no longer able to bear the pain, then that is the time for you to get up and walk. But not to change your position, to relieve, relieve of the pain. If you change the position, if you shift the position, to relieve of the pain, it becomes a bad habit. Then when you are meditating experienced in advanced stage, you have no pain, 
but your mind has a tendency to change the position, though you don't have the pain. Why? Because of that bad habit of a changing position. So when you become the unbearable, the, then you must not change the position, you should get up and practice walking meditation. About one hour or fifty minutes, one hour. Then you are, you are, the pain will go away. This is a end sitting. But end sitting, you should sit with the relaxation in mind and body. Your mind also must be relaxed. Your body also must be relaxed. <clears throat> you must not let the mind tense. You must not let the body become tense. Sit and relaxation in both body and mind. But the body must be kept in an upright position. The head also must be kept in an upright position. The body must not be bent, must not bend. But even though you keep the body in a preposition. When your efforts becomes weak, then it becomes gradually bent. If you know it, you keep it up again, making mental now straightening, 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 the movement of a straightening. When the body is in a position, in a normal position, upright position, then you note rising falling movement. <coughs> <coughs> then you note rising, falling, rising, falling movement. In the same way, <coughs> when you sit, you should keep your head also in a preposition. The head should not be bent forward or should not be bent backward. It must be in a preposition. <clears throat> Some meditators sit in cross-legged position. I think it's not very good because meditators are not accustomed to, to sit in cross-legged position. So he feel painful sensation in a short time when he sit in cross-legged position because one leg <coughs> presses against the other. So you got the pain in a short time. Without sit the cross, crossing one leg to against each other, you should place the two legs side by side evenly. One leg is outside and the other is inside. Then the two legs are not crossing each other, so there's no pressure against each legs then you don't have the painful sensation in a short time. But when you have sitters for some time, you may feel tense the, in the area of the knee, but you should observe it. Then in the walking meditation, in the walking meditation when you walk, the purpose of uh, 
walking meditation is to be uh, to realize to realize each movement of the foot very well. Movements of the foot is vayotatu. It has also three characteristics. To realize impermanent suffering, impersonal nature of the movement of the foot or vayotatu element. We have to observe each movement of the foot while we are walking. That's a walking meditation. So when you walk, you should look at a place about six feet ahead of you, six or seven feet ahead of you, without looking around here and there. People walking stand still and look at about a place about six feet ahead of you and focus the mind on the movement of the foot, observing each individual movement of the foot <coughs> attentively and precisely. First of all, you note one step, one noting, left, right, left, right. When you make less step, left steps, observe the movement of the foot of the left. When you make right steps, you should observe the movement of the right foot. Make a mental note as right. Left, right, left, right. If you are able to observe the right, the left and right foot of the movement of the right, left and right foot of more to a certain extent, then you can increase your object. You should observe the lifting of the foot, the heel lifting. Then when it pushed forward, not pushing. When it put it down, putting or dropping. In this way, lifting, pushing, dropping, lifting, pushing, dropping. You must not look at nearer than six feet. If you look at nearer than six feet, in a short time you feel tense in the neck. You may feel dizzy. You may feel tense in the back. So to avoid it, you must not look at nearer than six feet. The eyes should be half closed, looking at about six feet ahead of you. When you put down the foot, you should put it down flat. Normally, you put the heel first and the toes later. But uh, in meditation, in walking meditation, you should put the foot flat, drop flat, so that you can drop the foot flat. Your stepping should not be long. It should be a length of a foot a length of a foot. And also, you must not put the foot down one foot after another. If you put on in that way, it's unnatural. Then you may lose your balance. You can't keep your balance. So you must not put down the foot one foot after another. Then, when you lift the heel of the foot, you note lifting. Be aware of uh, the movement of the heel. And when you push it forward, observing 
actual movement of a pushing forward of the foot, making mental note as a pushing. When you drop the down, observing, observing actual movement of dropping, note as usual, a note as dropping. In this way, lifting, pushing, dropping, lifting, pushing, dropping. Stay until the end of walking meditation. Later on, you can increase your object, say lifting, pushing, dropping, touching, pressing, ending, lifting, pushing, dropping, ending, lifting, ending, pushing, and so on. But for the time being, for the say one or two, two or three days, you should note left and right about 10 minutes. After that, you continue to note lifting, pushing, dropping, lifting, pushing, dropping. Determine your mind that I won't look wrong while I'm practicing walking meditation. Keeping the eye all the time ahead of you. When you have a tendency to look wrong, that tendency must be noted. When you have a desire to look wrong, that desire must be noted. As tendency, tendency, desire, desire, under that tendency or desire has disappeared. When that tendency or desire has disappeared, you won't look wrong. <clears throat> then your concentration won't be broken. When you reach the other end of the walk, you should stand still, noting standing posture as is standing, standing, being aware of an upright posture of the body, noting as is standing, standing, about ten times. After that, you want to turn to the body. Then there is an intention to turn the body. Intention must be noted, intending, intending. Then turn the body very, very slowly, so that you can be aware of each individual movement of a turning. Observing the, the turning, the movement of the body as a turning, 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 turning. But when you turn the body, you can observe two things. One is, a, one is a you can observe the turning movement of the body. The other thing is you can observe the foot, which it turns, moves, turns, moves, turns, moves. But it's a better to observe the movement of the body, the turning body of the turning movement of the body, <clears throat> because uh, you have to observe the movement of the foot while you are walking. So while you are turning, it's better for you to observe the movement of the body, observing and noting as. Tanning, 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 tanning. Then when you are faced in the direction you came, then again stand still. No standing posture, upright posture about the body, no standing, standing, standing. About ten times. Then you walk left, right again. In this in this way you should walk one hour. Walking is sitting. The the duration of a walking is sitting need not be equal. But in the beginning of the practice, you should walk one hour, and you should practice at least one hour. If you can sit longer, you you should do. <clears throat> if you can sit longer, you should do say it is one hour and ten minutes, one hour and fifteen minutes. 
but you can. But at least you should sit one hour. If you are, you have, say, painful sensation after thirty minutes of meditation, then you observe the painful sensation. Pain, pain, pain. Be patient with it. If the pain becomes unbearable, you may change once, only once in a sitting, not twice. Because you are not able to sit <coughs> one hour. So later on, you won't need to change your position in a one in hour of sitting. Say, <coughs> after one hour sitting, then walk. After one hour walk, you sit, sit. But though we say normally, you should walk one hour, but in the schedule of a meditator, meditation, we put 30 minutes for some walking. It's according to the time. So at that time, you, you should walk about 30 minutes. In this way, well, you should walk, be aware of each individual movement of the foot very well. Do not let the mind stay just with the words lift in position dropping. The mind should go to the actual movement of the foot, the phenomena observing each movement as lifting, pushing, dropping. When you want to go to the place where you are to sit, there also you should carry on your mindfulness until you have settled down on your seat, observing, lifting, pushing, dropping, lifting, pushing, dropping, without interruption. <clears throat> When you reach the place where you are to sit, then you observe all actions and movements involved in the act of a sitting as it really occurs. This is walking meditation in brief. But we had three aspects of practice, walking, sitting, and awareness of a daily activity. As you know, awareness of a daily activity is a very, very much important to make progress in meditation. So whatever you are doing must be observed. Say, while you are stretching of the arms, bending of the arms, lifting and pushing, putting down of the arms, while you are holding the spoon, while you are looking at the food, and so on. Whatever actions or movements may be, must be observed in your daily routine, so that you can have the continuity of mindfulness for the whole day, as much as possible. Continuous and sustained, constant mindfulness is the cause of a deep concentration. The deep concentration enables you to realize three characteristics of a mental and physical phenomena. So today is enough. This is an introductory <coughs> talks for practical aspect of this vipassana. Tomorrow we will continue it. May all of you be able to rightly understand the technique of this mindfulness and meditation. Strive your best and attain the cessation of the suffering.